Hello folks, welcome to Lester's Custom Truck Shop. Building another LC995 V2. You can see we got the blue shot key diodes in there already. We've upgraded the 10.7 IL filter from a 25 kilohertz wide filter to a 15 kilohertz wide filter. We've also upgraded the RF amp to a 2SC2999. And I've had a lot of folks ask me, well, why do you upgrade that transistor? Uh, they come with uh, 2SC, what is it, 2834s now, and they've got plenty of gain. Well, that might be true. They do have plenty. They have more gain than the old 1675s. However, they don't have as much gain as the 2999. Okay, there's a, there's a marked difference between the ones that Galaxy are putting in here now, or actually Ranger is putting in here now, and the 2SC 2990. 2999 has more gain. Okay? All right. I set the voltages for the driver and the dual finals. It's 4 volts for the driver, 3.5 for each final. Okay, that'll keep you from burning it up. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, I do some, I make some component changes around the crystal in the frequency determining circuit to make the radio a little more stable. Okay, it still drifts. Uh, I've been thinking about ordering uh, some more crystals because this radio will slide like 10 kcs up and 10 kcs down. Uh, it actually goes past that about 11 and 12 up and 11 and 12 down. And that's because uh, this crystal has a very low Q. It, in other words, it can move around a lot by changes in the very active circuit. But what I've been thinking about doing is ordering some crystals with a higher Q and making it more stable. In other words, uh, the tolerance would be 25 parts per million. While this would make it not drift as much, it still drift a little bit. Yet you, they'll all drift a little unless you put them in a crystal oven. But if I do that, then that means you lose some of the slide. You'll only go maybe seven cases up and seven cases down. Now we're, that may be fine for most folks, but there are a few that get upset if you take away their clarifier range. So we change some component values. Uh, actually, I use uh, a few different capacitors that have a high temperature tolerance. NPO capacitors, okay, the NPO disc capacitors. They change very little. Uh, their value changes very little in accordance with temperature. They're high temperature tolerant. That's what the NPO stands for. Uh, that helps stabilize the radio, but the radio still drifts a little bit, so I have to let it warm up before I set the frequencies on it. But uh, Galaxy is doing better. Uh, Galaxy, I keep saying Galaxy. Ranger is doing better. Uh, hey, this is a Ranger board, see there, 6911D. Ranger is doing better as far as quality control, and uh, they don't drift as much as they used to. They used to be really bad. But every now and then I still get them with the green striped germanium diodes in here instead of the shot keys. So I have to change those out. All right. Oh, and there's the uh, upgraded capacitor for the uh, voltage input capacitor buffer. It's, I think I've explained this to you before. Galaxy puts a 1,000 microfarad 25 volt cap in there. I upgrade it to a 3300 microfarad, 25 volt. In other words, I multiply it by three. Now what this does is act like a, a small battery, okay? When you're really driving the radio, the voltage going to the radio will drop. And when it drops a little bit, like on your speeches on sideband, when, on your syllables on sideband, when you're talking 
this battery, this capacitor will act like a little battery and kind of fill the gaps up when the voltage from your alt, your car battery or power supply, when you hit your peaks, it'll give a little back. Okay, it, it'll put a little more juice back in the circuit so that your voltage don't drop so low. And that's the whole function of that capacitor right there. Uh, it also is a line filter. In other words, it filters noise coming in through the DC line. And the bigger the capacitor, the better. Okay, I also did that for the voltage regulator for the same reason. It acts like a little battery when you're hitting your peaks on AM. I, I know that a lot of you have seen the old 959s uh, with the wheat lamps in them. They dim when you talk. Um, what this does is help that it, it, by supplementing the voltage when the, you hit your peaks and the voltage drops this capacitor gives a little in other words it's charged up to 13.8 volts or whatever your power supply is so if the voltage drops below that below the 13.8 or 12 or wherever your power supply or battery is then it'll give a little back okay to help try to keep that voltage up. Now with it only being a 3300 microfarad, you're only gonna get short little bursts of uh, amperage back from it, but it kind of levels things out and makes the, the voltage line more flat. I hope I explained that well enough. But there you have it. That's all the, and, and there's the uh, the extra 10 amp uh, diode i got it across the six amp diode on the power connector that's if you hook the cables up backwards by mistake it should these two diodes should short out the cables and blow the fuse okay never 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 ever hook a radio up direct to a battery or any other power source without a fuse in line you're just asking for trouble if you do I can see it in emergencies, but that's the only, only reason you should be doing that. Never hook one up without a fuse in line, okay? All right. Let me go ahead and uh, put the covers, or actually I need to tune it up. Go back through it, let it warm up, set the frequency, and uh, do the receive tune since I change the diodes and I change that and I also need to adjust the noise blanker circuit and yeah folks it takes six diodes you see all these kits on eBay and other places they sell you four diodes and a transistor that only takes care of the RF okay if you like your noise blanker you'll want to replace the ones for the noise blanker too because why do the ones for the RF when the ones in your noise blanker are slower which means they're not going to keep up with noise as well as your receiver is getting it, <laughs> receiving it. So, you always need six. All right? Okay, more to come. Okay, and here we go. Here's the finished product. Well, I say finished. I haven't put the screws in the covers yet. I wanted to make sure that it stayed on center slot. Uh, it's been on for about an hour, so I want to leave it on a little bit longer. But uh, I can show you the limits of the frequency. We'll go all around the band H. Okay, and then push the plus 10 in. There's your highest frequency right there. Okay, and then let's go all the way back down to band A. There is your lowest frequency. Okay. Most everybody talks on upper sideband down here. All right. Let's go back to regular CB channels, which is going to be band E. Okay. All right. Everything works, echo works, you know, there's your echo, there's the voice changer, which I hate the voice changers, 
but the voice changer pitch is controlled by the echo time control up here all right echo position is in the middle there's your SWR Roger beep switch the SWR bridge is pretty close okay uh, it's going into my dummy load all right when you put it on Roger beep you see it says Roger beep the RB light comes on when it's in the SWR position or off then uh, it just reads RF okay uh, let's see I want, let's do a there's a receiver S9 that's right where it's supposed to be you see that meter supposed to be on a 1 right there okay that's on AM there it is on sideband okay all right uh, I think that's about it everything else is pretty much self-explanatory talk back is in the middle all the way over to the right is noise blanker and ANL in the mid center position is noise blanker ANL plus talk back and all the way over to the left is talk back off and noise blanker ANL off okay uh, output powers this outside dial here the inside dial is the brightness of the meter and the display and you can see I've got the fine and coarse tune uh, clarifier set up to, at 12 o'clock and we're right on frequency okay that's on AM lower sideband upper sideband that's why I don't have the screws in, screws in the cover I want to make sure that once the radio is totally warm uh, it stays centered up okay it looks like it's going to because it's been on now for about an hour so I think we're good all right uh, this one is for sale it's actually on uh, the Lescom website or it's HTTP colon slash slash store S T O R E forward slash Lester's customs all one word dot com or you can just go to www.lesterscustoms uh, and then click on the store link it's probably the easiest thing to do www.lesterscustoms all one word dot com and then click on the store link on the either the home page or the products page we have this one for sale in the store there's also the same radio is for sale well not the same radio but we're also selling these on ebay okay you save a little bit of money if you go to the store and buy it actually you save a lot of money if you go to the store and buy it okay and and the reason for that is that ebay charges fees for everything i sell on ebay and they also charge me fees for shipping they get a percentage of what I pay or for what you pay for shipping can you believe that tell you what boy that's a greedy bunch of bastards on eBay but that's where everybody goes when they go shopping so if you see this and want one go to www.lesterscustoms.com and click on the store link or you can go to eBay our eBay seller ID is LCTS that's Lima Charlie Tango Sierra 03 okay that stands for Lester's custom truck shop the year 2003 all right seven threes everybody <laughs>